When your emotions, your mind, your energies are balanced, you feel a sense of, it becomes a very subtle sense of myself, a sense of somebody here. And only when something comes a bit out of balance, then it really strengthens up. It goes into that particular feeling, emotion or energy, and then uh, you get wrapped up into it. But let's consider that this is not the case and all of you are really balanced. So you only get a slight sense that someone is here, but it's not bothering you. Since you are balanced, it's not bothering you, but you still get a, a distinct sense of myself, me, or I. And even in full consciousness, you may feel that sense. But in full consciousness, you're, there is this great openness that you are, and then you won't confuse yourself for this smaller self. So this sense of myself is, it's a sense, it's a feeling. Just like a sense that not only you are, but also that you exist. Now these I call default senses. It's a default sense that I exist. Of course, it's totally normal. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. And you come to see those deeper default senses that I exist, for example. You come to see them more and more clearly as you pass through the great, great void. As you pass through the deepest unconsciousness. Like even a default sense that this is a human being. A default sense that there is a, that there is existence, that there is this room or space or environment. Because you see, if, if, if a fly flies by, the fly, how does the fly feel itself? It just buzzes around quickly, notices this big clumsy beings around it who wave their hands so slowly and clumsy that it can fly three times around it. How does a fish perceive reality? Does it feel wet? <laughs> I like to say that when the fish will realize water, the nature of water, that it's in the water, it will become enlightened. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the paradox like humans seeking for themselves is like fish looking for water. You know, it swims around, where is water, where is water? The same way human beings, where my, where's myself, where's myself? So reality is very subjective. So reality is very subjective. What is reality to a fly, to a fish, to a bird, to a bat? 
what is reality to a planet as a living entity? What is reality to the galaxy as a living entity? So every one of you has a default sense that you are a human being, that you are a male or female, that you exist, that you live. Actually, motion as such also doesn't exist. Because these are if you if you are into videos you know that these are frames per second pictures per second so in a deeper sense nothing moves these are only frames per second appearing to moving but if i go higher above nothing is moving but things are appearing they appear to move. Now this might be difficult to understand. So in a deeper sense, it is all motionless. On the higher divine planes, it is beyond creation. It's motionless. It's static. It's not even even creation is a very strange thing in the divine existence because creation is a temporary appearance it's a projection and yet human beings take it for granted that this is real that I am a solid person and this is these are my feelings and this is my world and the rest is a bit unknown or strange and sometimes homey and friendly so this feeling of myself is a very strange feeling it is a sense Ramana called it the I thought. It's not a regular thought, by the way. It's not a regular thought. It's a core sense, to be more precise, a core feeling. And if you're balanced in all respect, you will just feel that somebodyness here. And upon looking closer, this somebodyness is just another feeling, like anything else. So why then I would hold on to it, if it's just another feeling? Feeling of love, feeling of joy, of peace. These are all feelings. And the feeling of somebody is also a feeling. But there is a problem with humanity. There has been, well, that's a whole different subject, that there is a, a default problem in the code of humanity. It's a multidimensional error, we may say that that sense of I is a certain energetic blockage and through it things get cramped up like a bit like having a stick in the wheel like it's it's not going so smooth and with that sense of myself it, it gets sticky and things get engaged and involved and attached and the sense of myself is primarily 
on top of Amrita Nadi, it's on top of it. To, it's blocking Amrita Nadi. And then the way I see it is it's like a mechanical clock. You know, many gears are gearing one another and thus time is created. So your ego, your personality, the ego personality, there is a healthy personality and there's ego personality. So the ego personality is, is that unhealthy, crampy, geared up, sticky, attachy noodle soup. <laughs> and everything is so mixed up that regular people don't know even where to begin to unmix it. And when Carl Jung looked into the psyche, into the subconsciousness, he found that it's so symbolic in many ways in the subconsciousness, in the dream states, in subconscious meditations, that again, it's so hard to untangle it. It becomes very symbolic, very not direct, illogical in many ways. But looking deeper all these deep resistances it points to energetic disbalance to the core energy or a core feeling so this is why when you when you go through presence non-duality into awareness it is important to stay with that feeling, to be as the I am, to be as that core feeling, now without these many extra stories, without extra confusions on top of it. When you unpeel stories, blames and he or she or this or that when you unpeel it all in the deep sense there is a sense of myself or i am and then you do need a few good months ideally a few good years just to sit with it with this i am and the more you sit with it, the more you start to see how it works. The more you start to see how things attach to it. And then you start getting some immunity. And this is the transitioning into non-dual state. So this feeling of I am, or I, myself, it goes deeper and deeper until when you reach what we call supracausal truth. It's, it's barely there in, in a way, and many people feel quite happy with themselves at that stage. But then I like to challenge them. If we meet regularly, you know, we tackle it in an easier way. But if we meet less regularly and someone is a bit more, has tendencies to escape, avoid, stay in peace, don't get involved, then I challenge their peace to see how to see to to up uproot that hiding now the ego becomes already like a soft puppy or or a bit like if you really poke it very well <laughs> it, it becomes a bit like a grumpy bear or a soft puppy, 
at that stage in the supracausal truth. So a soft puppy is, is in a way that it has already been beaten up so much by your inquiry, by your light of awareness, you know, the light of your consciousness that it's very willing to collaborate with you as long as you, as long as you leave it on the side, <laughs> as long as you don't dig too deep into it. But when you start to dig deeper into it, the grumpy bear wakes up. And then normally a person, well, depending on personality, some people, like, ah, oh, rah, 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 you know, <laughs> this kind of thing arises in them. Or, or, or they switch into victim position or defensive position. It, it, it kind of, it, it doesn't want to be exposed. You know, as long as you leave it, it will be your good friend. This deepest eye to be a good friend, as long as you don't touch too much it. But if you really start poking it, it will become very grumpy. So this is why at this, one of these final stages, a person tends to prefer peace and be by themselves and not get involved in, in too many things and feeling very good with themselves. Well, because it's already a lot of consciousness is present, a lot of peace is present. But if I ever come to you and start poking your buttons, know that it's for a good cause. So from the rock solid sense of myself, at the very lowest states of consciousness, it starts to peel off layer by layer. You stop believing in the stories you, your, your mind is making up. You start healing things around your wounds. You learn to let go things. You learn to soften your resistances. Resistances are also very good poking points because something is hiding there if there is a resistance. So as you uncover these layers, stories, healing, wounds, resistances, avoidances, denials, And then certain illusions, false beliefs, and so on. Then you come to this core, as you stay with this core of I am, it becomes wiser, deeper, more collaborative with you, with the self until it softens up more and more and more and you, you, you start to really see it better and better and better, this deep I, deep myself, deep somebody. And then you quarantine it. You, I can witness how in people this sense of I it like shoots up in a one third of a second. It's super fast. Just like shoots up into the brain, into the third eye center, and it takes over. So the eye claims everything as its own. So when we quarantine it, 
at each of the stage. And then we start subsiding it into the heart on the right. And we quarantine it, quarantine it, quarantine it. We don't give it food anymore. You know, if you give rat food, it will keep coming back. So if you don't give it food anymore, if you don't participate in it anymore, and if you quarantine it, then you have a chance with further transmission and a higher consciousness presence to to, to have that internal shift where you as you, you become openness. You as you, you become this undefined, open self or whatever name you want to call it. And then it, it's, it's, still, it's still present well, it, it, it takes a while to fully this, to fully unpack it, to fully dismantle it. But then you're no longer like, confused or uh, there is this greater openness present. And it is still necessary to keep focusing on the self because you see you spent decades lost in the little self, decades. And with, the, with these bigger awakenings, you still need to keep strengthening up in the deeper light in the bigger, in the big self, to see it from different angles, so to speak, to test it in different ways. And that's how you stabilize more into it. It's like egg, you know, you can make a, a, a soft, very soft egg, which is very watery. You can make it half cooked egg or you can make it well done egg. So when you open on the into full consciousness, it's more of a soft cooked egg, still watery, hasn't, hasn't settled yet. Takes a little while to make it well done.